present the presentation sash to the winning owner. And if I could now ask uh, the chairman of the VRC, Mr David Burke, to begin our presentations. Your Excellency, Sir James Gobbo and Lady Gobbo, Mr Premier and Mrs Kennett, Lord Wakeham, ladies and gentlemen. The VRC is most grateful to Amy for the, for the sponsorship of this event. It was a great race and we congratulate the winner. I would like to introduce to you the Chief Executive of AMI, Mr Brian Keane, who will make the presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr Keane. Your Excellency, Mr Premier, ladies and gentlemen, AMI is proud to be associated with the VRC in the presentation of Victoria Derby Day. Without doubt, simply the best day on the racing calendar. It's a day that's become synonymous with the finest quality. And we want to congratulate the VRC on continuing to maintain that tradition of quality, just as we at Amy continue to be the very best at what we do. To win the derby is the stuff that dreams are made of. That culmination of everything racing, that special thrill reserved for the very few. And today, the derby belongs to second coming. And on behalf of Amy, and all its special people, it gives me very great pleasure to congratulate the connections of uh, Second Coming, Mr P. A. Moroni, Mr A. J. Burton, Mr P. S. Lindbergh and G. G. Peterson, the trainer Michael Maloney and the jockey Greg Childs on what must certainly be a fine performance. Could I ask Mr Paul Moroni to accept the trophy, the 1997 Amy Victoria Derby? Chairman of the VRC, sponsors of the Victorian Derby, ladies and gentlemen, my brother and I, Mike, have been in racing all our lives. We're quite young for the industry. It is our life, and to be here today in this position is a great privilege and a great thrill. We've started towards the bottom of the industry and we're clawing our way up the ladder. And to come here today and have our very good staying colt second coming, win the Victoria Derby, you can't, words cannot describe the thrill. I'd like to thank Mike very much for the manner in which he's trained the horse. A little bit of help from me, maybe. I'd like to thank Nigel Sutcliffe, who had the horse over here originally, and then Bob Morris and Stephen Pinfold for the great job they've done in the absence of Mike and I from week to week. All credit, of course, goes to the horse and all, also to the jockey, Greg Charles. Greg said he had a clock and he went out there and he used it and he turned it into a dour staying test and our horse, he came out on top. It's a very special day. My heart goes out to my wife and child at home. Darling, this is what it's all about. Thank you very much. Congratulations, ladies and gentlemen. I'll also ask Mr Keane if he wouldn't mind uh, presenting the trophy to the winning trainer from Morphinville, Mr Michael Moroni. And Michael, congratulations. And no doubt this will leave some great memories for you here on Derby Day. At all the dignitaries, all the committee people here, ladies and gentlemen, it is certainly... Uh, the greatest thrill that I've had in racing. I thought winning last year's New Zealand Derby with great command uh, was a thrill that I thought I'd never ever surpass again, but to win this one certainly uh, is, is a great thrill. I'd like to thank uh, Bob Morris, who's been in charge of my team here. Certainly he's done a great job. I've been doing a lot of it over the phone. I've, I've been doing a lot of travelling backwards and forwards because we run quite a big team back in New Zealand and Adelaide as well. I'd like to thank uh, Stephen Pinfold, who's there with the horse now. He's also done a great job, and Nigel Sutcliffe as well. I'd like to thank Greg for following instructions out to the letter. We were pretty confident this horse would see the distance out. We decided that we would make the other horses uh, see it out as well. Uh, certainly was a great ride. Uh, I'd like to thank the owners, 
for giving me the opportunity to train them. And special thanks back home to all my staff as well, because the horse did start off there. My wife Jane, who's here with me today as well. And I'd just like to uh, thank my brother Paul for the great eye that he's got selecting these horses. We, he paid 22000 for them, the South Island sale. I went and had a, had a look at him at our pre-training places in Newera Lodge. He told me then that he'd won a derby. He didn't say which derby. That's the only thing. Thanks very much. Mr Keane, I could also ask you to uh, present the trophy to the jockey. And while perhaps maybe the winner got under the guard of many, I don't think you underestimate this fellow, because if you're talking of informed jockeys, you certainly are talking of Greg Charles. Um, members of the Victorian Racing Club, oh, Mr President, members of the Victoria Racing Club, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to thank AAMI Vars, uh, AAMI, for sponsoring the derby. Um, the million dollars will go down a treat, uh, or a percentage of that. I'd like to thank uh, Mike Moroni and his staff. He's done a terrific job. Uh, he hasn't been an easy horse to get right. Um, he has his little funny ways, but today the instructions from Paul Moroni was to lead, and uh, I'm pleased to say that uh, we did that, and we did that in fine style. I'd also like to thank the connections that uh, the staff with the Moronis back in New Zealand, Adelaide and Melbourne. Mike Moroni has a big operation and uh, he's obviously getting the winners, which is proven here today. And the owners of Second Coming, thank you very much. Well done to Greg Childs. Terrific front-running ride in the Amy Victoria Derby. And the good thing about Derby Day is, Jen, the highlights keep on coming. There's the toad call for race seven. The Louis Vuitton McKinnon stakes over 2,000 metres. The scratching is number nine, Magic of Sydney. So we've got a field of ten, and five of these are Melbourne Cup runners. Yes, and it'll be interesting to see how they do perform today because it's all important for Tuesday. Pete, I like number eight, Marble Halls. He's one of the horses engaged for the Melbourne Cup. I thought uh, at Caulfield, you know, he broke through the gates before the Caulfield Cup, yeah. and I wonder whether that unsettled him just a little bit in that race. I thought he'd go better here today. Number 11, Dane Ripper, she won the Cox Slate, and she did it very easily as well. I think she's got to be considered a chance in this. And number two, Seascay, I've also put in. So Marble Halls from Jen, Dane Ripper from Richard and John, and uh, I have, in fact, gone for Falonte number one. Number one, Falonte, the tip there for race seven. But it's a fantastic race, and uh, I'm sure there's going to be plenty of activity in the betting ring. Tim Gossage was doing a fairly passable impersonation of a goldfish before, but I think you're back in town now, Tim. I certainly am, Peter. Thank you very much. It was a bad result for Punter's second coming winning the derby. The bookmakers, much happier now. An open race for McKinnon. There's three very close in the market at the top. Falonte, of course, Marble Halls and Dane Ripper. The only other horse under double figures at the moment is Istadad. It's going to be a keenly contested betting affair, I'm sure. Tim, thank you very much. Race 7, the Louis Vuitton McKinnon Stakes. The class gallopers going around at 3.25. Tim will be back shortly before starting time. PD, thank you. We look forward to that. Now, just reminding you, the barrier draw for the Melbourne Cup, 6.45 tonight. And you can see where your horse drew in sports tonight. Tonight. And also reminding you to NBL, the final game in the grand final series is on tonight. The Magic and the Tigers live in Melbourne and after sports tonight in all the other states. In fact, check your local guide for the times, which is always a good idea to do. You know, every year something gets thrown up during Melbourne Cup week and amongst the millions of dollars, the stars of the track, the leading trainers, the Moroni brothers take out the derby as we take a break. Victoria Derby Day at Flemington and having had the opportunity to wander around this morning one of the things that I always like about Derby Day is that everyone goes to a lot of trouble to get dressed up because that doesn't she look lovely and all the fellas look a million dollars in the members and even some of them in the public areas of Flemington today for Derby Day now Sandra Sully that's enough of a rest I hope you only have one glass with bubbles in it and you have with you Toddy Goldsmith 
can't say too much about the champagne, but yes, I do have our very own Sex Life host, Holly Goldsmith, and welcome. Oh, thank you. And I'd like to vouch that she's actually been discussing going off and having her first drink when this is over. <laughs> Thanks, Toddy. <laughs> Rescue my reputation. Yes. Now, listen, you're having big wins today. Well, I haven't done badly. I think I've been hanging around the right people because I've had a few tips, and as the people I've been with have, and we've come in a winner each time. Yay! Off to some fancy restaurant for dinner. I, <laughs> I might have to join you. Now, you're a big star on 10, but you're also a big star in Melbourne with your breakfast radio show. How do you do it all? Oh, well, I do double TFM, brekkie show, and um, I get up at like quarter to five every morning. And Does sometimes little girl get I up? Wanna, no, she doesn't. I leave her sleeping and I kiss her, you know, bye, baby. So it's like the weekends are a huge thing in our household because I get to wake up with her. But it, I mean, sometimes it's hard yak when I feel like just getting that alarm clock and throwing it across the room. Actually, one morning I woke up with my alarm clock. I was asleep with it on my chest and it was still going beep, 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 and I woke up at six o'clock and I just like hit the roof. But it's just, it's a choice and, it, and it's, it's part of the, you know, being in the working force and the reality of life and I enjoy it because I get to work and I'm with great people so hello. Exactly. Now that's what, that's what you're doing now, but the acting bug has bitten you again, I understand. Uh, that's your new direction. Well, it's kind of never really gone away. I started acting at 19 and uh, years old, that was, not the <laughs> beginning of the 19th century. And I've gone in and out. My career's been fairly eclectic. I've gone from singing in bands, chantuzies, to... Acting? Acting, with soaps, to hosting Sex Life and radio and everything, but I, I you know, to be honest, the most sort of passionate and the biggest draw is towards acting. And I'm going to be doing a couple of plays in the in the new year, which is pretty exciting because I like the stage fright is, yeah, I'm going to do this thing, but I'm going to do it because it's good for me, character well, building. Well, we, list, we wish you the best of luck. We do thank have to you. go. Thanks so much right. for joining us today and best of luck with the future oh, always. Thank you. Any tips uh, for Cup Day? For Cup Day? Yeah, for Cup Day. I'm going for Always Aloof. What about you? Sounds good to me. And All the right. last race today? Oh, I don't know. I haven't looked at the form, I've got to admit. Oh, she's winning and she's not giving us a, her last tip, yeah. Tim, for the last race. What are we going to do? Not for the last race, I sh should say, for the next race. Yeah, what are we well, going to do? It's very unfair. I like Dane Ripper, so we'll see what happens. <laughs> By the way, tell Toddy that uh, I'm coming in for a yarn on Monday morning on the double, oh. on the double T. She probably doesn't know. Oh, no, that's fantastic. Monday, see you beautiful. Then. Yeah. Okay, bye. Okay. Bye. That's in Melbourne, of course, Double T FM. Now, our competition for you, the viewers right around Australia, to win yourselves an absolutely luxurious weekend. Here's the details from Angela Bishop. An exciting thing is happening in Sydney. I'm in the Lyric Theatre, just one part of the most amazing entertainment destination in Australia. Called Star City, it's set to open on November 26, and you could be here in Sydney to celebrate Star City's first weekend. Star City is giving away the ultimate prize. It includes a trip for two people to Star City to see Tom Jones live in concert on the 28th of November. You and a partner will be flying to Sydney business class and taken to Star City. City. You'll stay in the executive suite for two nights and enjoy dinner at Star City's exclusive restaurant, Astral. And just to make your stay even more memorable, you'll have $2,000 in cash to spend. There are also four weekends to be won at Star City and tickets to see Dean Perry's Steel City. All you need to do is call 1902 and answer this simple question. What's the name of Australia's most exciting entertainment destination? Now, don't forget, you can call all week today, Cup Day, Oaks Day and Final Day, and we'll announce the winner for you on November 10, Monday, November 10, on Sports Tonight. And again, reminding you, it's only for viewers in Australia. Let's check back in with Lynn Talbot. There's always a lot of fun and frivolity to be enjoyed in the birdcage area on Derby Day. And as you can see, it's a happening place. Some of these marquees are <laughs> bursting at the seams with people enjoying themselves and catching up with friends. Now I've got Nicole here from Amy who's going to tell us about these beautiful cornflowers. The cornflower is the traditional flower of Derby Day and it's worn on the man's lapel. Adding just that touch more colour to an already very vibrant day. Thank you, Lynn. Lynn Talbot there. She's joining us all week too. Now, Peter and Jenny are about to rejoin us. And you too, the Melbourne Cup situation will become a lot clearer in about 10 minutes. Yes, it certainly will, Tim, because we've got five of the runners here in the Louis Vuitton McKinnon Stakes, which incidentally it's time to start at 3.25. But the announcement, Jen's just been made. They've put it back five minutes and it will now start officially at 3.30. A uh, bit of a carryover from the presentation after the derby and the horses just coming into the yard now. And there are so many people in the Mattergaard here, of course. Yes. 
Yes, there are a lot of people, and uh, I just had a quick look there at Marble Hall. Yeah. He looks particularly well here today, doesn't he? Doesn't he look terrific? Well, let's go through these runners now as they come into the mounting yard. Somewhat in dribs and drabs, but most of them are in here, and Falante is a horse who always looks impressive. Trained by Jack Denham to be ridden by Jim Cassidy, and he'll carry those familiar white and purple colours. Well, his run was full of merit in the Cox Plate. Jim was forced to go a bit earlier than he wanted to there, and of course, he is class with a capital C. He certainly is, and uh, he's better on top of the ground. Of course, the track isn't too bad now, so I think he's got to be considered a chance in anything he runs in. He really has got some class. Cease goes an old marble, the seven-year-old, number two, trained by Peter Hayes and ridden by Greg Childs, who is definitely in form after having won the Amy Victoria Derby. And he's just such an honest galloper, Jen, that anything he starts in is a chance too. And I thought the run in the uh, Yolumba Stakes at Caulfield behind Falonte was pretty good. It was good, Peter. And the thing about him, he's sort of been freshened up. He's had a few weeks off yeah. uh, to get himself ready for this. And this is probably the race he's been looking for as well. So he's a fresh horse on the scene. And his last two have been terrific. He must be considered a good chance here. Peter Hayes has got two other runners in the race. One of them is number three, Istadad. Stephen King will take the ride here for this horse. And we'll have a look for him in uh, just a moment. Istadad can't quite see him in the mounting yard just at the uh, present stage. But... Really, is he earning the tag of a non-winner, Jen? Is that a problem? Well, he's always thereabouts. If things go his way on the day, then he can get the money. But uh, you have a look at his recent form, and it probably does appear to be the case, Pete. Um, he's one of those horses that, in these types of races, is always considered a place chance. Right, I will definitely take a look at him when he comes into the yard. Number four is Magnet Bay, Chris Johnson. Now, he is the first of the horses in the uh, McKinnon Stakes in the Melbourne Cup. He finished... 11th of 18 in the Caulfield Cup prior to that 7th of 9 behind Falonte and he wouldn't be suited at weight for age. No, not really. The thing about Magnet Bay is uh, he's a horse that really does appreciate a wet track and he's not got it really here today. There's Skybone number 5. Now, he does appreciate a hard track, this fellow, and he was in 13th place in the Caulfield Cup. Prior to that, had run a pretty good race in the Turnbull, and of course, we can't forget his magnificent run in last year's Melbourne Cup. Well, you'd expect today he's going to get well back again, as his normal style of racing is, and I think I prefer to watch him see what he does here to, uh, today for Tuesday. What about Six City Ram to be ridden by uh, Brett Preble? It's at huge odds in the race. Yes, I think he should be too. I think he's outclassed in this race. Seven Ebony Grove, the rider, is Shane Dye. The longer the race, the better he's going to be. 2,000 metres might be a little short for him, but it'll be an interesting pipe opener. Yes, uh, he got a bit too far back at Caulfield at his last start, this fellow, and uh, died in his run, I thought, uh, in the Caulfield Cup. Maybe um, see what he does here today for Tuesday. As we said, Marble Halls looks magnificent. Oh, he certainly does, and I think uh, this might just top him off for Tuesday. It'll be interesting to see how he goes. He's my choice in the race. Number 10, Markham. It'll be an interesting Melbourne Cup trial for him and Cliff Brown. Yes, uh, you go back to his Flemington run, he pulled a little bit there and I thought it was a nice effort in the Caulfield Cup. Um, might lack a little bit of brilliance for this, Peter, but uh, definitely one worth watching here today. And finally, the Cox Plate winner, Dane Ripper. Oh, a terrific effort in the Cox Plate and really did it with absolute ease. I mean, it, it, it was run to suit her in the end, but hey, she did it and she's got a pretty good record. I think she's a good chance. Top tip only, Jen. Top tip is number eight, Marble Halls. They're on their way to the stores. Louis Vuitton, McKinnon Stakes, back to Flemington very shortly for the running of the big event. Uh -huh. And we're back at Flemington, they're moving into the stalls for the Louis Vuitton McKinnon Stakes. The singing syrup is taking effect and Roy Higgins is down with the last minute thoughts. <laughs> Thanks, mate. I'm going with the mayor here, uh, at number 11, Dane Ripper. A uh, strong win in the Cox Plate. Look excellent going out. I marked her on top of number eight, Marble Halls. Look for a bit of improvement on this today, Marble Halls. Besties look the whole preparation. And Toppy Falante has done a treat. And put number five, Skybow, into your extra multiples. Look for a big run on a Melbourne Cup point of view. 11, 8, 1 and 5. Good luck, mate. Thanks, Roy. They're just about set. Dan Maliki and Gary Willis. All ready to go for the McKinnon at Wait for Age. Can Dane Ripper make it two group ones within the week? Falonte, runner-up in this race last year. They're racing now. Sky Bay missed it probably by a link. 
Ebony Grove and Mark Amis down early. Dane Ripper and Seaske are going to get back. Ister Dad just in front early. Falante going past it now. And further out was Iterim and the red cap. Getting to fourth was Marble Halls. And on the inside fifth would be Magnet Bay. A length away, Dane Ripper. Mark him a little wide at the moment around Seaske, which is getting over to the rails. Skybow second last and Ebony Grove at the rear. The speed's pretty good. 1,600 to go. Iterim is working hard to try and get around Falante here. It leads nearly a length now. Two lengths away third was Istadad. Three quarters back fourth was Marble Halls. Now racing fifth over on the inside as they head inside the 1600 metres mark uh, was Magnet Bay. A length further back to Dane Ripper. She's midfield on the outside of Seaske. One and a half to Markham. Two lengths to Sky Bow and a similar gap of two lengths to Ebony Grove. Who's about ten off the lead as they go inside the 1200. And the leader is the Bolter and that is Iterim. By two lengths to Falante. A length and a half away Istadad. Third on the inside of Marble halls another length and a half to dane ripper going around magnet bay two lengths to seascape a half to markham three to sky bow and two and a half away last was ebony grove who's at least 10 maybe even 12 off the lead they've got 800 to go interim in front has set a pretty solid speed here leads a length Falante. a length and a quarter is to that marble halls is fourth just lost a little ground there magnet bay inside it then dane ripper around seascape markham third last from sky bow and ebony grove Rounding the turn in the McKinnon Stakes and Iterim by a length and a half. Falonde second. Then came Mr. Dad. Magnet Bay over on the rails. Marble Halls next, about four off the lead. Dane Ripper easing to the outside at Ebony Grove. Back on the rails from Seascay. Iterim the leader down to the 400, led by a length. Two Falonde called on it. Here's the mayor. Dane Ripper joining in. Mr. Dad the centre, then Marble Halls. Falonde hit the lead. After it was Dane Ripper and Ebony Grove getting a run. Falonde in front. Ebony Grove railing. Mr. Dad. Dane Ripper wide out. Ebony Grove has hit the lead in the uh, Louis Vuitton McKinnon stakes and it's all over. Ebony Grove has won it. Ebony Grove first. Estadad second. Third I think for Londe and nose to Marble Halls. Then Dane Ripper. Next home was Seascape from Magnet Bay, Skybow, Markham and Edirham at the tail. Well, what an incredible run there. I sort of thought a thousand metres out. I was not ashamed. I just giving the horse a little bit of a niggle up. But he got all the runs and G. All the honours are with him. The other good run for the Melbourne Cup point of view was Marble Halls. I thought he didn't have a lot of room in the straight. Well, that was a terrific win. He was 12 off the lead, I'd say, conservatively at the 7 or 800. Dye went uh, for the best possible place, the rails, to save the ground. And he effortlessly seemed to have taken the run. And yeah. I never really saw Shane get vigorous on the horse. No, he read the line beautifully. And uh, I, I thought I thought, uh, in your call, I noticed you say Marble Horse lost a little ground. I think all uh, Damien Oliver was trying to do there was just try and get back to the inside, Dan. Uh, because I think as to that, it came off the fence at that stage, and he wanted to let it go so he could get back on that good ground. 731 of the official numbers. Yeah, you can see Damien there. He's actually got hard up against the rail by the time they've hit the line, and he's missed third by a pimple. Yeah. Uh, Falonde probably at the end of its preparation. Dane Ripper put herself into the race at the 300, coming wide, but said today's not the place to be. Right. But uh, what a ride to save the ground on Ebony Grove and such a soft win. John Letts with Shane Dye. Shane, you said earlier in the year this is the best horse in Australia on his day. It looks like you're, uh, you've, the words have come true. Yeah, this is one horse I've really fallen in love with. and He's an outstanding race horse and he only gets his day once every four or five runs, but there's no horse in Australasia that can beat him when he gets it. Shane, uh, the Melbourne Cup. It's going to be very, very hard to beat. He had a nice, easy run today, even though he ran. He's the horse they've got to beat. He pulled up well, didn't he? Yeah. He looks good. Good luck, Shane. Good luck Thank in the you. Cup Tuesday. John Letts out there talking with uh, Shane Dye. And Graham Rogerson is uh, just speaking to the assembled media. And we'll uh, just have a quick chat to uh, Graham now. He's, you know, he's been unlucky, you can't knock the horse. You know, we get stipes even want to ride him, so I mean... <laughs> <laughs> so you can't, you know... You got the instructions that I grow? No, I left it to Jane today, I said, but don't leave the fence. Gee, it was a mighty ride too, wasn't it? Oh, well, you either love him or you hate him. Today I like him. Tomorrow <laughs> I might... Slashing Melbourne Cup drive. Yeah, you know, but he's still got to do it. Come Tuesday, it's another race. He looks the sort of horse, though, that the 3,200 metres really shouldn't be a problem to him. Well, if everything goes right, he can run his last two and 22. So horses that can do that, that can stay, it is a big help. Well, we might be seeing you in the same place on Tuesday, Graham. Well done. Thank you. Graham Rogerson, the winning trainer with Ebony Grove. And that was a terrific Melbourne Cup trial. And as he said, some days you love him, some days you don't like him too much at all. But he loves Shane Dye after that ride, bringing this handsome black horse back to scale now.
after the running of the Louis Vuitton McKinnon Stakes. Second placing in the race going to number three, which was Istadad, another placing. And third was number one, Falonte. Had a perfect run. Maybe that Cox Plate run might have just taken a little bit out of him. Marble Hall's pretty good run in fourth placing, stuck on nicely. And fifth home was number 11, the BMW Cox Plate winner in Dane Ripper. Here's Shane Dye. He'll probably get a bit of a mixed reception, but he's used to that in Melbourne. But the applause is drowning out anything else. There's a horse that's going to run a big race in the Melbourne Cup on Tuesday. Ebony Grove by Grosvenor, a horse that won the Derby here in 1982, 15 years ago. And one of his better sons might possibly give him perhaps his biggest win here at Flemington on Tuesday. Ebony Grove wins the Louis Vuitton McKinnon Stakes with Shane Dye up. We'll take a break and be back with the correct weight signal and the dividends. You're watching Network 10's live and exclusive coverage of Amy Victoria Derby Day. Flemington after the Louis Vuitton McKinnon Stakes and you can see Des Gleeson there having a good long chat to Greg Childs the rider of Seascay and uh, also there is Darren Biedman the rider of Dane Ripper. Greg Childs apparently we hear is weighed in light and they're waiting for the bridle so they have declared correct weight for the first four. So here's something you don't see every day, a jockey weighing in light. So they've called for the bridle, which they can do under the rules of racing. And correct weight is there, Whitman's correct weight there for the first four. And Greg Miles just making the announcement over the course here. So Greg Child's just waiting for the bridle to uh, come off his horse and then he will add it to the saddle and the saddle cloth and the whip, or not the whip, the whip and the uh, skull cap will be handed to Mr Des Gleeson when they weigh in. So this is quite an unusual occurrence. You don't see this too often, Dan. Yep. 90 and 290 for Ebony Grove, number seven. Three Isted at $2.80 and one for Londe, $1.40. The Quinella, $49.50. The Trifecta, $318. Exacta paid $92.20 and the double for nine and seven, $330.50. Fourth in number eight, and that was Marble Halls. Fifth in was Dane Ripper. The time was 2.2.6 and the margins were one length by a long neck. Very impressive cup trial by Ebony Grove and not a bad one from Marble Hall. Let's look at the next race while we're waiting for Greg Childs to do his business there. It must have been all the excitement after the derby, Jen. Yes, uh, probably has got to him. It was a big, big race to win anyway. The Salinger Stakes, race eight, five past four. Scratchings at 10 paint, 12 Katana and 15 Toledo. So we've got three of them out. As we look at the tote figures, look at that horse, Poetic King. He is just a marvel. I mean, really, he should almost be dead by now. He's had a lot of problems, hasn't he, yeah. Poetic King? And he is a fabulous racehorse. He's, he's got to be one of the main chances in this race, Peter. I like number eight, Rock U. He's had six starts down the straight for three wins in a couple of seconds. So his form is very good there. And um, the other horse that I was giving a chance to was number nine, another excuse. He got a mile out of his ground last start, and I thought he could go better here. I think Pingulu's going to improve now that the track's a bit firmer. If it had been rain affected, I doubt that he would have been in the finish. But I've gone for Poetic King. They call him Plugger in the stables. That's his nickname. He is anything but a plugger, and he'll run a big race in the Salinger. Race 8 at 5 past 4. Prior to that, a presentation after the Louis Vuitton McKinnon Stakes with Rob Gaylor. Yes, it is presentation time for the seventh on the card here on Derby Day, which is the Louis Vuitton McKinnon Stakes being a Group 1 event. Mr Andrew Ramsden is representing the VRC, but Mrs Julia King is to make our presentations here the Chief Executive of Louis Vuitton Australia Proprietary Limited. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. On behalf of Louis Vuitton Australia, I would... Uh, like to say first of all thank you once again to the VRC for inviting us to be part of this splendid carnival. Derby Day is a wonderful day. Today we have had the most splendid weather. We didn't think we were going to but also um, we all carry our wellies, we at Louis Vuitton all carry our wellies to try and keep the, the uh, rain away. The grounds look gorgeous. I'd like to congratulate the ground staff. The roses have never been better. 
And of course, last but most importantly, I'd like to congratulate the horse, Ebony Grove, that beautiful black horse on its wonderful win, the great ride by Shane Dye, the trainer Graham Rogerson, and Mr. Clyde Buckingham, who represents the owners. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like you to join me in congratulating these people. Congratulations to the connections of Ebony Grove, and they might be accepting a trophy worth even a little bit more on Tuesday afternoon at around half past three. Now, we've got correct weight for...